show. It is May 1st, and we are here at the number one leading pigeon show coming out of the United States, which is the Pigeon Academy show. We are here tonight, and we are getting ready to have some fun, do some chatting, and see what's going on on the internet. So we are here, and we got some things that we're going to bring out. So it should be a fun, entertaining night. So welcome aboard. Welcome to the show. Again, I'm your host, Rodney G, and we are here coming to you live from none other than the Big Apple, New York City. So we're going to get right into it and start this show off right, and we're going to kick it off with a little bit of controversy. So what are we going to be talking about? What's in the news? In the news. What's in the news? What's hot? What's going on in the news? And we're not talking about no fake news. We ain't talking about no propaganda. We are talking about what's going on in the pigeon news. So let's get right into it. Last week, let me let me update you. Let me update you on some of the things that occurred last week. Last week in the news, we put up a post about the report that had came in and guys were on social media, Facebook, and they were talking about counterfeit bands that were being used, that were being labeled AU and IF. And of course, we gave our opinion on it. And we said officially that it was bootlegging. That was the opinion of the Pigeon Academy. Uh, we said it was bootlegging. Of course, we're going to have our session here where we acknowledge everyone. I see some people uh, coming on. Alex, Danny, welcome aboard, guys. Uh, we are talking about what's in the news. What's in the news is those counterfeit bands. I'm going to say it's no longer alleged. It is counterfeit bands. In their preliminary report, the AU has responded. I haven't heard anything officially from the IF, but the AU has officially responded to the counterfeit bands. These were bands that were being uh, made outside of the AU and the IF and the CU, and the AU seemed like they responded. They also put an article. I haven't seen the article, but I did see it on, on Facebook on page four in the digest. So they responded, not only did they respond on their page, they responded in the digest. And I'm like, uh oh, it's getting hot. The AU responded. So far, I haven't heard anything from the IF, but let me tell you, this is a hot, sticky subject. And it should be because counterfeit bands, a lot of guys came out on Facebook and they were saying, this is cheating. They were saying, this is cheating. They were saying, it's nothing but cheating. We gave our opinion. We said, it's bootlegging. We were waiting for the investigation. We were waiting to hear from the AU, the IF, or the CU. And so far, we've only heard from the AU. And here is the response from the AU, okay? AU response to counterfeit bans, reported. You can go to their website. Also in this link on, on, on this page, when we do the rebroadcast, you can go on and you could go to the, the PDF. Let me see if I can share it with us here. You can go to the PDF that shows those bands, what the AU said. I can't seem to pull this thing up here, but that's what was going on. That's what was going on. They, their response was, I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it to you guys right here. I'm going to read you what the AU said. I still have it here. Below is a list of counterfeit bands recently reported. There are others being reported as well and will be listed 
in future publications. And then they gave a, a plethora of band numbers, locations, all throughout the United States from, from West Coast to Midwest. And they put all these up. And then they finished it off and they said, we want to remind members that the AU is a registered trademark of the AU and, and legal action will be taken to protect our trademark and copyrighted material. And I said to myself, I said, there you go. You got an official response from the AU. There was some gentlemen, some racers, when they heard our comment, Last week on the show, they approached me and said, you shouldn't be talking about this. And I'm like, look, man, we got an opinion here on the Pigeon Academy show. We just don't talk about the birds. We talk about what's going on in the pigeon sport. We talk about these things. And then I find out the same guys who told me I shouldn't be talking about it. Guess what they're doing? They're on Facebook talking about it. And they were, they had many different issues. My thing is, I got one issue. Hey, if it's counterfeiting, it's counterfeiting. If it's bootlegging, it's bootlegging. I let the investigators decide whether it's cheating or not. Our official statement was that it's bootlegging. It's like if I turned around, my loft is the six star loft. And I found out somebody was making bands saying, making six stall off bands and saying, hey, these are descendants of the six stall off birds. They're gonna have a problem because we're gonna file a lawsuit. This is the real world that we're dealing with. This is the real world that we're dealing with. So that's what's in the news. The AU responded and said, don't be utilizing their tags as with these bands. They said, no, they said, no, we, we don't want that. They said they got the trademark and rightfully they probably do. Legal, with the, all the legal, legalities that's out here, I'm sure they got things in order because they shots fired, shot over the bow. They gave the warning and said, discontinue these actions. So for those you know, guys that are thinking that they're playing around, they made a response. They made official response. The AU made official response. So far, we haven't heard from the IF or the CU, but the AU stepped up and said, hey, man, these bands, we don't want to see these bands out there. We don't want to see these bands. And they made it crystal clear. So that's what's in the news. In the news is being brought to you by none other than Global Pigeon Supplies feed store. You can find globalpigeonsupplies.com for all your pigeon needs, your feed, your supplies, all your things that you need, bunk bars, probiotics, PMV. Go to globalpigeonsupply.com. And in the news was brought to you by Global Pigeon supplies. That's right. That's right. We're pushing a lot of people that way. So this is what we're dealing with tonight on the Pigeon Academy show. I want to go into our next uh, segment here. And let me tell you, this is something that really is touching home with me right now. Um, I've been talking with one of my partners, which is uh, Skyscraper Loft. And we've been really talking about certain things and let me tell you, I really picked up some great tips talking with him about uh, lofts, building a loft. You know, I recently built my loft. And one of the things I want to talk about tonight is loft eyesores. OK, so I want you want you guys and gals to understand where I'm coming from on this. And we're going to be talking about loft eyesore. What is a loft? I saw. So I'm going to start it off by putting things in perspective this way. One of the things that I see with us pigeon fanciers is 
We get a lot of complaints about the birds for one reason or another. And most people are concerned about the pigeons pooping, landing on their roofs and pooping, pooping in their pools, you know, feathers all over the place, odor. So we as pigeon fanciers, we got to understand one thing. If you're living in, you know, suburbia and you're not living somewhere like in Indiana or Oklahoma where you got plenty of land, you have to consider your neighbors. And one of the things that we're going to talk about tonight on this show is pigeon eyesore. And let me tell you, what we're going to be telling, especially you new fans here, when you build your loft, one of the things that you need to do is you need to consider several things. You need to talk about the security of your loft, because let me tell you, these predators are tearing up a lot of pigeons because the way we design in our loft, we've got squirrels, snakes, raccoons. I mean, everything. Uh, what's those, those, those big, big furry animals, man? We got raccoons. We got, some people got foxes, bears. And of course, we got everything that flies. Hawks, owls, eagles, red tails, falcons. We got everything under the sun trying to get at these birds. So we really got to consider how we build these lofts. And one of the things that we got to consider is how we build in these lofts and how they look. Are they an eyesore? Like I'm going to bring up some pictures right now, right? I'm going to bring up some pictures of some really nice, simple lofts, nothing extravagant. Some of these are lofts that were sheds that were converted into lofts. So this is what we are bringing up tonight is loft design. Here is a basic loft, which was a shed. Uh, they put a, a concrete bottom. They look like they got it elevated a little bit. But look how they have the grass. It's cut. Look how they have it color coordinated. This is what you, this is how you want to build your loft. You want color coordination. You want your lawn manicured. You want when people see your loft, they're not saying, what the hell is that? Because people are like, you bringing the value down of my property by having that junk in your yard. So you got to consider all these things when you're building a loft. There's really a loft here. Look at this nice loft here. All right. This is what we're dealing with here on the Pigeon Academy show. Look at that beautiful loft there. Here's another one. I want to say, I'm going to save the best. Look at this beautiful loft. That could be right here in the Bronx, New York. You see those back fences? You see a lot of that right here in the Bronx. They got it elevated and look at the color coordination. Somebody built this. Or I, I believe this is a shed that was converted. And then they put the they put the screen box on it and made it very simple. But look how beautiful it is. This is how we got to build. We have to pick up our game. Here's another loft right here. Look at that. Look at that. Nice big loft, landing board. And what do you see in the front of it on the bottom there? Flowers. Yeah, flowers. This is what we have to start doing. We have to start taking away all these miscellaneous, miscellaneous complaints by doing what? Making sure our lofts are not eyesores in our yard. I hope you guys leave some comments on this. Let me tell you, I saved the best for last. Look at this. There you go right there. Look at that loft right there. That is a beauty. That is a beauty, my friends. That's how you want your loft to look. You don't want your loft to be an eyesore. 
We got a very short show tonight. Our show will probably go no longer than 20 minutes. But this is what you want. Look at that. That looks like Francois. Look at that. That's what's called a garden loft. Now, if you got a loft on a roof, you still can have it looking beautiful. You can still have a beautiful loft even if you have it on a roof. It could be something like that or something like that. But this, to me, is one of the prime examples of garden style loft. I'm going to tell you like this. I'm working on my loft, and I'm trying to build it similar to that. A good friend of mine, my racing partner, Skyscraper Loft, you don't see a lot of pit. Let me tell you, go to Skyscraper's loft page. I'm going to put you out there, Skyscraper. My, my bad. <laughs> He's got a beautiful manicured garden. Looks like the Garden of Eden. And then he's got a beautiful loft that he built with his own hands. I'm not going to put any of his pictures up because I didn't get his approval to do so. But it's similar to this. This is how we got to build. This is the future of, of lofts. Those lofts where they're not painted and they're just wood. We got to step up our game and we got to make sure when the summertime comes and people got their pools, you got to pull back on your birds. You cannot, I must say this, you cannot get into this attitude where you're like, the hell with my neighbors. It's a wrong attitude. You're going to get complaints. You're going to get complaints. And let me tell you, some of your neighbors be surprised. They're politically connected. They connected with law enforcement. You don't need all that noise. A soft word appeases much wrath, okay? So this is what we're bringing to you tonight. We think it's important that you build appropriately and so forth. Let me tell you, when I first started off, right, when I first started off, I'm gonna show you, this is how I started. I had a real simple loft, and I'm gonna tell this story how it went down, right? How I started off in 2016 when I came back in. I wasn't prepared, I wasn't ready, I had the fever, and this was my loft. This was my loft right here. And here's the funny story to this. I was racing birds to that. I was racing birds to that. I raced all the way to the 250. And my season got cut short because I got hit with Andino. But that was my loft. I had that on a balcony. That's what I had on a balcony. That little bitty box right there. I'm going to show you some pictures of it. I want to welcome Skywatcher to the show. Welcome, Skywatcher. But this is what I had back in 2016. I had this on a balcony. There's my four birds that I, I raised, and they went to the King Lou's auction. One of those birds that same year scored second place at the King Lou's 350-mile race. Even though I had a little loft, I had some, I had some top pedigree pigeons. And that was a loft. Those were some of the birds. There's my black diamond bird that raced all the way to the 250. And he was coming back to this little bitty, this little bitty cage. And let me tell you, guys were getting at me. They were getting at me. They were saying, where's your loft, G? Where's your loft at? And I was like, right, right there. You didn't, you didn't see it, the dog cage. Some guys were getting rude. They were like, oh, man, he got a dog cage, this, that, and a third. I was like, I don't care what you call it. Because I knew. I was like, I'm going to get a loft in the very near future. I was just practicing the trade. I was just practicing getting in the groove because I knew. I said, birds will come back to this cage. And they even had the love of the loft at this little cage. And they came back from the 250. And the best we did was 18th place from the 250 coming back to this little bitty loft. 
We're building something like this now, but this is what we started off with in 2016. And let me tell you, guys were being rude with me. They were saying, oh, you got a dog cage, this, that, and the third. And I was like, so? It's like, it doesn't matter what I have, because tomorrow I have a nice loft. It doesn't matter what I have today. I always believe that saying, dress with what you bless with. And that's what I had. My birds were coming back from 250 miles to a dog cage. And that's how I started off. That's how I started off. And these are the things that we be going through. That's how I started off. Back in 2016, coming back. So listen, I want to I want to get into the session where um, we want to say hello to a lot of the fanciers that's out there. We want to say good evening to uh, Skywatcher. So we're going to bring him up here. John J. John J. J. I see John J. got a, a, a new magazine out. J. I'm going to try to collab with you, man. We want to push your magazine on our show and um, keep things moving and support you and whatever you're doing on your end. We see Alex Cruz is out there. Alex is always out there uh, hanging with us, chatting with us. Danny is out there. And welcome, guys. Welcome to the Pigeon Academy show. We're going to do a rebroadcast. Again, we're having a, a really short show tonight. Um, we're going to be doing our thing. So this is pretty much what we're doing and what's going on here at the Pigeon Academy show. We are definitely pushing the envelope to get everything done. We hope in the very near future that you could communicate with us and be a guest. Our number is in the link down below, which is 347-299-1480. You can come on the show. You could film some footage. We would love to have you. We don't care if you're a blue collar racer or blue collar fancier all the way to your white collar fancier. The show is for you. This is your show. This is the Pigeon Academy show. This has been your host, Rodney G, here at the Pigeon Academy show. We're going to, again, we're going to have a very short show tonight. We just wanted to bring some things to, to you guys' attention. And we're going to say good evening at this point. Thank you for watching this very short episode of the Pigeon Academy show. It's been your host. Rodney G. See you soon. God bless.